In today's lab, you are going to see what happens to the beads, to the alginate beads, when you add sodium citrate to the beads. To start, let's just review about what kind of beads you can make. So keep in mind, we have the alginate and it's pre-made and it's pretty red colored from the food coloring. You can use calcium chloride to make calcium alginate beads, or you could use copper sulfate to make copper alginate beads. Additionally, you have some options for the concentration of the calcium chloride beads. These are 1%, but you could also do 5%, or you could dilute and make whatever new concentration of calcium chloride you want to use to make alginate beads. I've chosen to make alginate beads with 1% calcium chloride, 1% copper sulfate, and I also used, sorry, it's supposed to be a two. I also used 5% calcium chloride. This is a spot plate and then you will be transferring the beads from the solution. You'll put the beads into the spot plates. Just like it's important to label so you know what beads you've created with what solutions, it's important to label your spot plate. So to label the spot plate, you need to indicate where you are putting um, the beads, what they were made from, and then how you are going to treat them, either with the sodium citrate or with a control solution. So I'm going to label mine 1%, 1% CA plus 2, so I know that these beads were made with the 1% calcium chloride solution. I'm going to mark the 1% CU for the copper alginate beads, and then my third row will be the 5% calcium alginate beads. I will transfer accordingly. And so this will be the experimental, meaning you will add eight drops to each of the wells of your experimental sodium citrate solution. Then after you add your eight drops to each of these wells, you will note your observations and then make sure you also have a control solution that you are dropping onto these. So you can compare your experimental with the sodium citrate to the control that doesn't have sodium citrate. 